with respect to the demographic change in this country. The Honorable Ed resuming debate. Member for Edmonton St. Albert. Thank you, Madam Speaker. It is uh, indeed an honour for me to rise and add my comments at report stage with respect to Bill C-20, the Fair Representation Act. Madam Speaker, as you know and as all members of this House know, representation by population is one of the fundamental principles of democracy. In fact, it's one of the principles that this uh, country was founded upon. If you uh, research the debates uh, leading to the, the the British North America Act and, and the formation of Upper and Lower Canada with, uh, with New Brunswick and Nova Scotia in 1867, you will know that our, the Fathers of Confederation ins insisted that this House, the House of Commons, be based on the concept of representation by population, that all Canadian citizens in the new country of Canada should have equal voice in electing members to this chamber. They'll have equal voice in the affairs of their nation and uh, that their members will, within reasonable limits, represent the same amount of people. And those principles that our, our, our country and our constitution are based on are as valid today as they were in 1867. So it will come to, to no surprise to the members of this House that I support uh, Bill C-20 and I congratulate the, the Minister of State for Democratic Reform for introducing this piece of legislation. And it will, Madam Speaker, in my view, remedy some of the current deficiencies in representation in this in this chamber. This piece of legislation, as you will know, and as members of the House will know, does not dictate the number of seats that each province will get, but rather it sets a formula, and it changes the formula that determines the representation in, in this House. And as members will also know, and as what Canadians will know, Several provinces in our confederation are growing much quicker than others, and I happen to represent a constituency, an electoral district, in one of those fastest growing provinces, the provinces, uh, province of Alberta. And the other fastest growing, or the faster growing provinces, as you know, Madam Speaker, are British Columbia, where you are a representative, and of course, Ontario. Now, representation by population, which I think we can agree on two things. I think we can agree that that is a principle that ought to be adhered to to the greatest extent possible. But I think members will also agree that true and perfect representation by population is impracticable in a country as diverse as Canada. Simply stated, we have too many densely populated areas around the greater around the GTA for example in greater Toronto Mississauga Brampton other suburbs they're they're densely populated and they're growing uh, arithmetically conversely we have very sparsely populated parts of our country the north uh, the arctic of course the, the territories the northwest territories Yukon even northern Alberta uh, when you drive an, an hour north of my riding of Edmonton St Albert you begin to enter sparsely populated parts of our province. So we will never have perfect rep by pop because there has to be some accommodation for um, less sparse or for less densely areas to be represented. Some provinces uh, are, are, are and territories of course are entitled to representation and they, they require and, are, and deserve a voice in national issues. And of course over time the whole issue of representation in this place has been modified by a number of formulas, each superimposed upon each other. And we've talked about them today. There's the Senate floor clause, which I think was about 1915, which guaranteed that no province could have less seats in the lower chamber than it has in the upper chamber. And then there's the 1985 uh, grandfather clause, which uh, dictates that no province could have less seats than it had at that time. So we have a number of uh, rules superimposed upon each other, and that uh, coupled with the fact that some provinces are growing very quickly, including mine, has led to the current disproportion. And it's, it's a significant disproportion, Madam Speaker. Uh, according to uh, the Mowat Centre, 61% of Canadians are currently up or underrepresented in this chamber. 61%. But worse, visible minorities and visible communities are particularly unrepresented. And that is uh, because they tend to um, reside in the densely populated urban areas which are underrepresented largely but not exclusively in the greater Toronto area of, of Ontario. In fact I was uh, speaking with uh, my colleague from Brampton West just uh, after question period and uh, he in fact has the highest according to the 2006 uh, census he has the highest 
number of constituents in this country. And based on the 2006 census, uh, 2006 census the population of Brampton West was 170,422 people. But he advises me that, uh, that those numbers are five years old and there is likely in excess of 200,000 people living in his constituency. But more significantly, 53% of those, according to the member, are visible minorities. Now this creates some, some really distinct problems when you try to represent both that amount of people and that amount of visible minority. As I know from representing the, the good people of Edmonton St. Albert, the majority of what we refer to as casework is immigration work. The individuals uh, who are attempting to uh, get visas for their relatives or attempting uh, to expedite their path to citizenship. And I represent a relatively homogenous riding in Alberta, but casework still takes up well over 60%, probably close to 70% of the files that come into my office where my constituents need my assistance. So I cannot imagine the workload for a member, like the member for Brampton West, who represents, according to him, 200,000 people, half of which are, uh, are visible minorities. So this bill tends to, to remedy those deficiencies by working towards representation by population, although admittedly not achieving it in any, any perfect form. The new formula will allow, or will, uh, the calculation will give Ontario 15 additional seats, uh, British Columbia 6 additional seats, and my province, Alberta, six additional seats. It will also provide uh, Quebec with three additional seats to uh, allow it, because of its unique status within our confederation, that its representation will be comparable to what it is currently. So, uh, Madam Speaker, this, this uh, is a, a great attempt at moving towards uh, representation by population. And I want to share an anecdote. I think I'm almost out of time. But I have some experience with, with the issue. Three minutes? Oh, thank you. And then I can tell my anecdote. Um, I have some experience in this matter, and I know the members of the Liberal Party are advocating that provinces such as mine be awarded extra seats, but the size of this house not increase. And we were faced with a very similar problem in Alberta in uh, about eight years ago when I was an MLA for Edmonton Calder where we had, we had a similar, we had a comparable situation where the city of Calgary was growing very, very quickly. The city of Edmonton was growing, but slowly, and rural Alberta was either staying constant or some parts were actually uh, getting smaller. So we were, so the people of Calgary, the good people of Calgary were underrepresented in, uh, in the provincial legislature and we had to wrestle with this very same issue. And ultimately, the decision was made, similar to what the Liberals are currently proposing federally, is that the provincial legislature would stay at 83 seats. But to accommodate that, we would take two seats away from rural Alberta. And I, say, I know the member from Crowfoot uh, remembers this. We would take two seats away from rural Alberta, one away from Edmonton, and give three to Calgary. And the outcry was unpredictable, or perhaps it ought to have been predictable, but it was loud. The residents of Edmonton, the citizens of Edmonton, would not and did not accept that, that one of their members of the Legislative Assembly of Alberta was going to be taken out of play, that they would have one less representative. They felt disenfranchised. They spoke loudly, firstly through letters, letters to the editor, editorialists who wrote that the, the MLAs for Edmonton were not standing up for Edmonton, um, and they subsequently spoke in the next election. Uh, th their dissatisfaction, and of course that wasn't the only issue, but they were certainly dissatisfied with the fact that they had lost a member of the legislature. So I say to my friends opposite who are advocating for keeping this house at the same size, but reducing the members from certain provinces, the individuals, the citizens in those provinces will not accept it. They will argue and argue correctly that they have been disenfranchised, that they have lost membership in this house, and that they care about representation, and they will be upset. So this formula, which expands this house marginally, allows for more representation for faster growing provinces such as mine, such as Ontario, such as British Columbia, but does not take away seats from any province 
Therefore, it is a good compromise, and it is a step towards representation by population, which is a fundamental concept of our democracy and needs to be preserved. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Questions and comments? Uh, the Honourable Member for Davenport. Oh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Well, I listened to my uh, colleague opposite very closely, and <clears throat> he says that, uh, that uh, Quebec's uh, status in this House is going to uh, remain. Uh, the way it was uh, prior to the implementation of, of this bill, if it, if it passes. And while that's simply not true, I, the, the member knows that the uh, Quebec's seat representation drops by a percentage point. Um, why, the, uh, why the vagaries around the language there? You know that that's the case. Um, why are you trying to say opposite? The Honourable Member for Edmonton, St. Albert. Well, under the formula, and it's a formula, it's not a dictation of seats, but uh, based on population census in the 2011 census, Quebec will be afforded three additional seats under the formula that is proposed in this bill. So I am, I am a little confused as to why the member believes that Quebec is going to lose representation. The, Quebec's representation will be within a very small margin, 24-23.8%, uh, which is about what it is currently. In fact, Quebec will not lose seats. Quebec will gain seats, three of them. Uh, questions and comments? Uh, the, 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 the Honourable Member for St. Laurent, Cartierville. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Start to argue and to come with an example in this province that's been difficult to reallocate seats. But it's happening in every province. It's happened in Manitoba, where Winnipeg had more seats and rural regions had less. It's happening today in my province in Quebec. It will happen in New Brunswick if they will even decrease their seats. Everybody is doing that around the world. And Canada is overrepresented. We have a very decentralized federation and we have a lot of MPs that not have the same scope of responsibilities than in a more centralized country. There are 577 MPs in France, a country twice our number of population. In the United States, 435, a country 10 times more numerous than us. 450 in USSR, uh, in, in Russia. 450, four times more numerous than us, and so on and so on. We are overrepresented. His own boss said that in the past, when he, before he was prime minister. So why not reallocate in keeping the size of the house as everybody is doing, and as Canada used to do at the federal level no, not a long time ago? Here, here. Uh, the Honourable Member for Edmonton, St. Albert. Well, I thank the Honourable Member uh, for his question, and I really do respect the work and his expertise on this file, but, but, I, but I disagree with his premise. As he will know, my province, Alberta, and I talked about Alberta uh, and what we did uh, eight years ago, um, is actually increasing the size of its house prior to the next election, uh, which will be in the spring of 2012. But the issue is not the size of this house. The issue is the disparity of this house between regions, between regions such as those in Brampton and and those in sparsely po populated areas such as in the north. And the disparity between densely populated and less densely populated um, areas is growing and it has never been larger in, uh, in the history of our province, in the history of our country. And he talked about internationally and his, his figures are correct, but the disparity of Canadian um, weighted votes by provinces is, has never been greater and it is larger than in Germany, Switzerland, Australia and in the United States. So I agree with him with respect to the numbers, but the issue that's being addressed by this bill is the disparity, the dis disparity between sparsely uh, populated areas and densely populated areas and on, based on international standards, Canada is out of sync. Um. A very, very brief question. The Honourable Member for Crowfoot, there's a minute left. So thank you, Madam Speaker. And I, I want to thank this member for the insight that he showed in his speech in regards to uh, the, what's taken place in Alberta. And I, I'm just wondering if perhaps he hasn't hit the nail on the head of why we see the Liberals responding with the type of legislation that they would like to see. Um, the former Liberal leader just finished standing and saying that we can expect this. We can expect that rural is going to get less. We can expect that. But we see where the Liberal Party has been, uh, has been wrong on so many issues dealing with rural. They've been wrong on the Canadian Wheat Board issue. They've been wrong on the gun registry issue. They've been wrong on the issues, many of these other Order, issues. Order, please. I must give the Honourable Member uh, for Edmonton, St. Albert, 30 seconds to respond. Well, 
yeah, I'm not sure, not sure that my friend from Crowfoot asked a question, but but I do agree that I mean the the government and certainly uh, the minister, the, the member from Sherwood Park, and my and my friend has widely consulted with Canadians. Canadians in, in faster growing provinces, British Columbia, Ontario, certainly Alberta, want and demand greater representation in this house. Um, mem our citizens from other provinces do not want to lose representation, and I think he struck the right compromise. Resuming debate, uh, the honourable member.